Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a real quick video to share with you today and this is a dream. Uh, yeah, a vivid dream from uh, I believe that'd be a gentleman. Vin Strang. I don't know him but this is at the very top of the list on 444 Prophecy News today. The title is Before My Eyes They Vanished. Awesome. Well, it shows a picture of a little red tricycle just sitting there with no child around it. Just imagine it. Put up January 18th, 2021 at 821 a.m. He says, hi folks. I hope you are all well. I had a vivid dream last night. In the dream, I was taking care of my three-year-old niece and nephew. Suddenly, before my eyes, they vanished. I looked everywhere for them. <laughs> That's so strange to me. They were gone. I felt like this was not an isolated event, and he puts IE, global event. I believe this could be God telling us that the innocents are soon to be raptured. May Almighty God bless you all. Already 1,014 views. Now, I have heard it said that people, people have been told children go first. And then at the innocence, and then the first fruits. But others have said, no, we all go together. The way the Lord told it to me, we all, the first fruits, well, He called it the barley harvest. To me, when He spoke the word to me, He called it the barley harvest, not going outside of time. But that's what exactly we'll be doing, is going outside of time. Excuse me. And then we'll be getting our instructions and coming back in like a bubble, is, is how I've heard it described. We'll be coming back inside of time, but yet we'll still be outside of time. Time won't matter to us. We'll be able to work all night and it won't affect us, that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I hope this is encouraging an encouragement to you. I pray that if you're not ready and you have children, little children, or you're taking care of an adult, uh, you're an older adult taking care of an adult child that has never past fifth or six five or six year old brain capacity they're one of the innocents and they will disappear before your very eyes I pray you're ready to go with them so if you are not you'd better get on your knees get before God repent of your sins and ask him what do I need to do to be ready Lord I don't feel ready or I know I'm not ready. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything about going, and you will have heard if you're going first. If you're going to be in the first fruits, in the bride of Christ. Put it this way: <clears throat> nothing. <coughs> excuse me. Nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I think you can look up the word holy, uh, maybe in Strong's Concordance at blueletterbible.org. Blue letter Bible, all one word, lowercase, dot org. Just look up the word holy. See how it's defined. It, it, it doesn't mean you never sin. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But we repent of it immediately. We say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying that word again. Some of us are convicted to not even use words like 
crap. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, I can't think of another example, but that's one example. We're, we've cleaned up our mouth, we've cleaned up our act, and still we fall. Still we get angry and say something we shouldn't, or we're tired and a friend wants help right now, and you tell them, I just can't right now, you know, or whatever, and you, then you feel bad because you just told Jesus, I can't. Whatsoever you do unto the least of thy brethren, that you do unto me, said the Lord. Everything you need to know is in the first four books of the New Testament. I mean, Paul does expand on it. Peter, Timothy, well, it's actually Paul writing to Timothy, but Peter, you know, he has his Gospels, but if we're out of time. We are out of time. Get into the Gospels and hear what Jesus tells them how to behave, what to do. And then the book of Revelation has some too. When he's speaking to the churches, that's Revelation chapters 2 and 3. The things people will do that will get them left behind. Okay? like adultery and fornication. Uh, well, Paul gets into that more, but you know what sin is. If you love the Lord and you're doing something you shouldn't, it should be pricking your conscience. But the Holy Spirit will only prick your conscience so much, and then he'll back off. He's a gentleman. God will never force himself on you. He will let you live your lifestyle. And you can still be loving him and going to church and acting right in most every way, every day. You might even be repenting of doing things every day. But you're living with somebody. And he quit pricking your conscience because you kept telling him, I love him, Lord. I we're gonna get married. I know we will. I just I just gotta convince him. Something like that. So you take your life to the Lord and see if there's anything in it you need to stop doing. And get where you can say, I feel I live a holy life. Not that you're perfect, but you're working towards perfection because Jesus says, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's a goal, okay? It's a goal. All right, with that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our Internet connections. Okay, and with that, oh... I didn't brush my hair out. It looks terrible. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.